this um, this is my December roundup today is the 1st of January so happy new year I um, just like to say thank you for joining me um, thank you for returning if you are a returning viewer and thank you for checking me out if you are a new viewer um, for those of you who are new um, I just currently do monthly roundups of all the projects I've been working on, things I've been doing, as opposed to doing a weekly um, podcast. So I hope you enjoy. Um, as I said, it is the 1st of January. I wanted to try and get a video in to go over my December projects. And then hopefully I'll try to do a 2016 roundup um, in the next um, few days. So. I want to try and get this in as soon as possible. Um, it is a very gloomy day. It's just started raining. It's taken me almost half about half an hour just to get set up. Um, I was initially going to record in the bedroom because everybody is in the house at the moment. They're all in the living room, which is just there. I'm currently in the um, boys' um, playroom. So I was going to record in the bedroom, but... The lighting is just terrible. Um, it wouldn't have been possible to do anything in there and be able to see everything to its full glory. So I've decided to just come into the boys' um, playroom and try and record. So they've been banished for a while, but they're okay. They're all watching um, Mr. Bean on holiday, which is a very big family favorite. We all love Mr. Bean in this house. So yeah, that should keep them occupied. Um, Mr. Yu is there with them and we also have Rosita at the moment, which is why I'm not recording in the living room as I normally would. So for today, I have the usual finished objects, um, um, goodies and um, projects that are waiting in the wings. And we'll also have um, a bit of what's on Valerie and the word for the month. So I will just give myself a glass of water and then we'll go straight ahead with the FOs. Right, I'm back and it seems that in the minute or two that I was gone, um, the lighting has got a lot darker. So I'll try and get through everything as quickly as possible before um, we'll use the light even more. As you can see, I've been joined by Valerie. I'll just be closer. It's a lot darker, so it will be hard to properly see what she's wearing. So what I might do is um, <clears throat> during what on Valerie, I might I'll just put a picture somewhere on the screen, and then I might do a small recording, a short recording tomorrow um, when the lighting is a lot better. Okay, so FOs. Oh. Before I move to FOs, um, just a little bit about where you can find me. I'm on Ravelry as Yummy Triplet Mummy and on Instagram as Mrs. You Makes. All other social media sites, I'm either of the two, Yummy Triplet Mummy or Mrs. You Makes. Um, there is a Ravelry group for the podcast called again Mrs. You Makes, so go ahead and join there. You can post. Um, pictures of your FOs, projects that you are working on as well and you can also get help with any of my um, patterns that I've made. Um, as a, I do have patterns available on Etsy and also on um, Ravelry too so check those out if there's any you like. Go ahead, get yourself some. Um, yes, yeah, so um, sorry, I've got my notes down here. So FOs. The first FO for um, December is one that you may have already seen um, if you have watched the uh, November roundup but you wouldn't have exactly seen this one it is the Atlas sweater for Mr. Man oh it's gone a lot brighter that's much better it's the Atlas sweater for um, Mr. Man the previous two I've shown you were for uh, Mr. and Jimmy Jr. So I was able to finish this in time for all three boys to wear them to their school for um, Christmas jumper day. Um, I won't go into too much detail 
about this because I spoke a lot about it um, <coughs> last month. But yes, the pattern is by um, Jared Flood. Um, I followed the instructions exactly apart from the cast off edge around the neck. The pattern calls for a tubular cast off. I use is it um, Jenny surprisingly stretchy cast off? I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah, the boys were very very happy. Um, the boys were very happy with it. Um, yeah, more I can say. Um, I haven't um, sewn in the ends. I haven't got around to doing that, but I will at some point. I'll have to at some point, but yeah, I'm very happy. These are all the floats at the back. They are a little loose, but I think it's better that they're a bit loose than too tight. So that's done. Three atlases all done. Um, I'm not sure, well, I would like to make another one, but it's not going to be any time in the near future. Probably make one for Little Miss. Um, might be the cardigan version, um, but that involves steaking, so I don't know whether I want to go there just yet, but it will be some time before I work on that pattern again. Right, the next FO is a sock pattern. This it's my um, November sock. It should have been finished in November, but it wasn't. It is the Blueberry Waffle Socks. Um, I can't remember who the designer is, but I'll put those details up somewhere. The yarn is Drops Fable in the Blue Sea colorway. That's this bit. And the contrasting color is also Drops Fable Unicolor in Mustard. I am extremely happy about these socks. I love the way the colours work together. Um, yeah, I think they have lots of, of all their colourways, I think would look great in this pattern. And I think this pattern goes well with um, self-striping and self-patterning um, yarn. It doesn't really take away, the colours don't really take away from the texture of the pattern. You can still see something is happening there um for the cuffs i worked 20 rows i then did have i written it down um 48 rows on the leg and i did my usual 60 rows on the um, foot um for the heel i worked um my version of a, a german short row because with German short row, uh, once you've worked the first half of the heel, you then have to work across the instep. And as I'm doing it in a cost contrasting color, um, I didn't want to have I didn't want to have lots of ends to weave in. So I've, I'm not sure if this could be something that other people have done already, but I came up with a way of working the heel without having to go across the front. I'm still tweaking it to try and avoid um, holes. There weren't really holes here, it's not that bad, but as you'll see in my other socks there were, the holes were, weren't, um, the holes were more obvious. And I think for this I've actually, um, I've seamed in the ends on this, and so I've closed it up. A little but yeah I am very happy with that um, anything else to say on this I used 2.25 on this I used 2.25 for all my socks the next sock just take a break. this is malt not beer um, the next one was my December socks um, these didn't take as long to make, but longer than I wanted them to make. I was hoping to have these finished before Christmas, but I ended up finishing them on the evening of Christmas Day. Um, I haven't blocked these yet, as um, I found that with these, when I blocked them, 
even though it does fit around my um, foot, this um, cuff stretched out a bit too much. I've been joined by little miss who came barging into the room and has decided to help herself to my drink. So that's gone now. Right, as I was saying, um, yeah. My December socks, I managed to finish them on the evening of Christmas and um, I haven't blocked them yet. Yeah, I said that. Listen, hold on, yeah? Oh uh, yeah, I didn't want to block them because I didn't want the cuffs to stretch out too much. So, you finished? So, a little, looking a bit loose. Right, these are just plain vanilla socks. Um, in terms of what I've done, again 20 rows on the cuffs, this time I've done 50 rows on the leg because I didn't want um, this stripe to match with the contrasting colour I've used on the heel. They're not exactly the same tone, but <sighs> sorry for the interruption, um, as I was saying, these two colours, they're not the same colour, but they look very similar, so I didn't want them to be next to each other. So, instead of doing um, 48 as I was aiming for, I worked um, a couple more rows just to get to this bit um, here. And then for the leg again, 60, and then rounded toe, or what I think is a rounded toe, I'm not too sure. For the heel again, I did my um, adapted um, German short row. You can see a slight hole. Have I? I think I've. I don't think I have. Sorry, I'm just checking if I have looked in. No, I haven't worked in the end on this. <clears throat> So here, you can see particularly, there is a bit of a gap there. So yeah, I'm still working on that heel to try and find a way to reduce the gap. Um, yeah, but the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinner's um, signature four ply in the Hollyberry colorway. I got this from a D stash, and um, that's the main color. This one. Um, they um, West Yorkshire Spinners do do a um, contrasting yarn to go with this. They do that for their whole signature four ply um, range. But I went with Drops Fable um, Unicolor in red. Yeah, and for the cuff, I've kind of done, I can't remember exactly what I've done. I think it's a knit three pearl one knit to pearl to something like that but it's a sort of alternating rib pattern yeah so these are december socks and then finally i've got my march makeup socks um in march i knitted a pair of socks which i gave to my niece and as I am taking part in the Box of Socks Cal, hosted by Kristen of um, the Yarngasm podcast, I needed an extra sock to make up the 12 for the um, 12, the minimum of 12 socks that are needed. So these are my March makeup socks. Um, the pattern is Hermione's Everyday Sock, but I'm calling them my um, Hermione's Half a Day Socks. As I've only worked the pattern on the front half of the leg. The back half I've worked um, pearl um, reverse stocking stitch as you can see. Um, I did that just to try and make things a bit quicker so I could get them done because um, when did I start these? Yeah, I started these on the 26th of December so that only gave me four days to finish the pair of um, and also to save time, I've done 15 rows on the cuffs instead of 20. The leg, I've worked um, 36 and then I've done 4 rows of stocking stitch just to prepare myself to get into the heel. Having said that, on the second pair, 
I completely forgot to do that. So I've done 14 rows in um, reverse stocking stitch, which means this, the leg is slightly longer on here than it is on the other one. Um, <clears throat> the heel again, it's my German short row and the hole is a bit more obvious on these ones than the others. Um, the leg, my usual 60 rows and for the toe, for the other socks, normally for the toe I would do on rows 1, 4 and 7, I would work the decreases and do normal stocking um, work normally um, on all the other rows and then after row 7 I would decrease on every alternate row until I had 8 stitches remaining then I would kitchen it off but for this and the December socks instead I decreased on the 1st, 4th, 7th and 10th row then I decreased on every other row until I had 18 stitches remaining and then I decreased every row until I had 12 stitches remaining and I find this heel um, fits a lot better than the other one so that might be a heel that I continue to use um, not heel, a toe that I continue to use for future projects so yes, this is my 12th sock for the year. So I now have 12 socks um, to go in my box of socks. I have purchased my box. My other socks are in there, getting nice and cozy, getting to know each other. And I will show that in my 2016 roundup video. Okay. Um, oh. I can't remember who designed the Hermione's Everyday Socks um, pattern, so I'll put that. Hopefully I would have already put the um, designer's name on there already. Okay, so that is it for my finished objects. Um, I've only got one whip, which is the Blue Sands cardigan, and I haven't worked on it since I showed it last, so I'm not going to bring that out. I'll clear these away, and then we'll move on to goodies. Right, goodies. Um, okay, now, um, there's a nice amount of goodies here. The first one I received was this from Lamington Lass Yarns. Um, this is a yarn dyer who sells on Etsy. I'll put her um, <clears throat> details on the screen and there will also be a link either in the drop down box or um, in the um, <clears throat> notes. This is um, Lambington Last Yarns in Soft Socks. It's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Um, 100 grams for every um, 425 meters per 100 gram, and um, the colorway is Ichabod. I think this is absolutely lovely. Um, I bought it to go with um, the yarns I'm going to use for my next design project, which I will talk about a little bit more in a moment. But yeah, I absolutely love this. She has two other colours that I would, I have my eye on and I've got in my um, favourites on Etsy. So I will try and get those two at some point, hopefully. But yeah, check her out if you are looking for something. She's a UK based um, dyer. And this actually came the day after I ordered it, which was amazing. So definitely I will keep her in mind for future yarn purchases. Um, the next one was this. This is the final um, yarn which is for the um, Third Vault Yarns um, Quarterly Yarn Club. This 
one is themed around um, Lord of the Rings and the colorway is called Mordor. Now I'm not a fan, well I'm not really into Lord of the Rings, but looking at this it does say Lord of the Rings to me. I don't know what it is, but just something about it does say Lord of the Rings. I love these um, flashes of colours that are just here and then the kind of earthy tones that are on this end. I think Lola, um, the dyer behind Third Volt Yarns, is great at um, doing that, just blending colours in so perfectly and then just having that little splash of contrasting or um, pop colours in there as well. And there's also, as you can see, a stitch marker to go with it. Um, yeah, this base is Librarian Sock, which is 75% Superwash BFL and 25% Nylon, and it's 425 meters per 100 grams. Um, I would love to use this. Um, I haven't decided what I would do with it. Maybe a design project maybe a crochet design project it's been a while since i did a crochet project but we'll see what happens but yeah i'll be excited to get this on the needles or hooked up in some way um the last yarn goodie was um a d stash and that's this it's cascade um, 220 sports the colorway for this um, I don't have it here but it's not written here but I'll be able to put it on the screen um, I've got seven skeins um, four in this color three in a red um, shade but I've left that I've left that in the bedroom but I put a picture of it somewhere yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's my first time using um, Cascade. So I'll probably use this either um, using all seven skeins to make um, a sweater for myself or I will use the blues um, for the Tripolatas seeing as I've got four skeins of this and I'll use the red for Little Miss. Um, I haven't decided yet. It depends on whether or not I find the right pattern. But yeah, that is a future make in the waiting. Um, now, my only other um, goodie for the month is a non-yarn related goodie. It's this, uh, it's a knitting design um, knitter's graph paper journal. Each page has um, graph paper specifically for knitters um, because normal graph paper is um, an even sided square but as you can see knitters graph paper the, is wider um, and that's um, that represents a knitting stitch a lot better than using um, graph paper so I've used this to plan out two um, projects already I won't show you those and um, yeah I can see this being filled up with um, project ideas and some doodles if I get a bit bored but I'm glad I finally got around to getting this I picked it up from Amazon um, I can't remember how much it was but it wasn't um, expensive it would have been I would have preferred it if either it was maybe spiral bound so then it's easier to um, work on especially um, yeah especially when you're working on say for example this page it just makes it easier um, to work on or if it was perfectly decorated it would be easier to rip the, the page out and just work flat um, the only other downside I can see for this is just the fact that um, it's not the p single page isn't long enough. So if you're working on a pattern that was going to be 
maybe like a shawl or something you may have to glue or tape two pages together just so you have something um, seamless continuing on and then you can get a proper um, idea of how your um, end pattern is going to turn out uh, but yeah I'm still happy with it it's great for sketching and things like that so yeah Okay, so that's all my goodies. That's all my goodies. Um, I'll put them away and we'll move on to the next segment. All right, it's waiting in the wings. Um, I've only got one project that I have planned for um, this year so far. I do have other projects planned, but this is the only one that's an immediate one. It's a design project. Little Miss, can you please leave Valerie alone? Yeah, she's not doing anything to you. So, getting back to what I was saying, so, um, yeah, this is the only immediate project that I have planned for the year so far. Um, I've sketched out how I want the colours and everything to be arranged but I haven't finalised the stitches I want to use. So for this I'll be using the Lamington Last Yarns that I showed you earlier and I'll be pairing it up with the minis I got from the first um, quarterly um, third volt yarns club package that was um, given, I think it was sent out in March, yeah, I think I received this in March. Um, this was inspired by the TV show Firefly, um, and these are the minis that came with it. They're being washed out a bit at the moment. Um, so there's this one, which is a sort of a minty green color. This was called um, Pilot. And there's this purple, which is companion, or was it Inara? I can't remember. This is the reader, and this is Captain Tight Pants. And those of you who are fans of Firefly will know who they are referring to. And if you go back to my, either the March or April roundup, I think that's where I talked more in detail about these. Um, so yeah, they will be worked together to make a cowl. Um, I think they do go well together. It was difficult finding um, yarn that would work with all of them. I had initially planned to go with something grey, but I couldn't see anything that had the um, darker grown tone of grey that I wanted. That was something more of a kind of steel pewter um, type of tone so in the end i went with this and i think they should go together yeah so look out for that hopefully by in the next before the end of the month i should definitely be finished with it and then i'll just put it up for testing Right, so that was my only um, waiting in the wings item. We will move on next to what's on Valerie. Okay, so here is Valerie. Let me just adjust her slightly. Okay, so um, I think it was my October roundup. I was wearing this and I said that if I hadn't done um, I walked on Valerie with her, but I wouldn't do that. So here she is now. Um, this pattern is called Ijoma. It's a Ruana that I designed. Um, I can't even remember when I designed it. But yeah, it's one of my, I would say, my first major design project because of all the um, cables that are involved. The yarn I use for this is Lion Brand um, Wool Ease. I initially wanted to use um, patterns, um, 
colour works, Aaron, but that was being um, discontinued, in particular the shade I wanted to use. So I went for this instead because it was the only one I could find that came close to the colourway I initially wanted. So you can see you have a cable motif at the back there. Um, I will put a picture in of this so you can see a lot better. There's a cable motif at the back and a cable going down the sides and at the front <coughs> you have a cable motif there as well on both front sides. Now this can be worn in different ways. You can either so, little miss again bursting in um, yes this can be worn in different ways it can either be worn like this as you can see here okay. all right little miss has returned to daddy okay so this can be worn in different ways either like this as you can see here or one side over the shoulder I'll lower her bits so I can get a better view. So one over the shoulder, or two over the shoulder, or you can be wrapped up like this and worn with a belt, which is what I normally do. I normally wear uh, the whole thing tied up or just the front bits belted up and then the back left hanging loose so yeah um hopefully i will have put the pictures up already and you can see the various ways that she can be worn um this pattern is available on my etsy store um, it's also available on ravelry and on crafty too um it is a quick pattern to make up because the yarn is um, worsted um, weight so it, even though it does look big it doesn't take long to work up and the cable patterns are simple to work through as well um, and if you do pick this up um, always feel free to head over to the Ravelry group where you can ask me any questions about the pattern itself. So that is the Ijoma Ruana. Oh, and just a note about the name. The name means a safe journey in the Igbo language, which is what my family are part of. It's one of the tribes in Nigeria and it's actually one of my middle names. It was given to me by my granddad and it means as i said safe journey so i thought it was a very fitting name for this garment so i do hope you like it and that you get yourself um, a copy of the pattern right so we're done with valerie and um, we're done with all the other segments in the podcast uh, so we will move on to the word of the month once i've cleared all these other things away we're now on to the final part of the um, episode. This is um, Word for the Month. It's the section where I share a piece of scripture. Um, so if this isn't for you, you're more than welcome to say goodbye at this point. But I hope you have enjoyed the episode and that you do check out the Ravelry group. Um, and also come back very soon for um, the 2016 roundup. I also have other videos available to watch for um, with recipes and craft tutorials and I hope to do more of those in this um, new year. So do check those out and come back again for the next episode. Okay, so the word for the month um, for January is taken from Habakkuk the Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 and it reads Fig trees may not grow figs and there may be no grapes on the vines There may be no olives growing and no food growing in the fields There may be no sheep in the pens and no cattle in the barns But I will still be glad in the Lord. I will rejoice in God my Saviour um, no, this is a verse that 
um, was brought up during one of our um, Bible studies when my husband was um, leading and when I read it it just reminded me of the fact that things don't always go the way that we expect or the way that we want. There may be troubles going on all around us. It may seem that we're living hand to mouth. Um, and especially in my experience, when there have been times when things have been a struggle, I've always found that even in those difficult times, there hasn't been anything that has stopped me from praising God. And it's that ability to be able to still praise God and still be thankful that um, has helped me to um, not um, feel anxious about those difficult times. And I felt that always having that joy in your heart towards the things of God and knowing that this may not be going right, but he is always still there and his love and his grace is um, they're always still there for you and that's the things that will then bring that joy and happiness in your life even though other things may not be going so well and it also gives you that strength to keep um, moving on despite what's going on in your life because you know that there's somebody out there who has this unconditional love um, towards you um, hello if we go on to the next verse which is verse 19 it says um, the lord god is my strength he makes me like a deer that does not stumble i'm almost finished um so i can walk on the steep mountains so that just again further goes on to say that he is our strength and he's always going to be there for us despite what's happening so the joy that we have is in him is enough to maintain us and to keep him and we will continue to praise him, we will continue to worship him, we will continue to glorify him despite what's happening because we don't just praise him because he gives us things or because he makes everything well. We praise him and glorify him just because he is our God and he paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. Um, so I just hope going into January that no matter what, I hope that no matter what is happening in your life, that you're always able to find joy in the smaller things and always look at the bigger picture and know that there's nothing in this world that can completely destroy you or turn you down, that there's always things or there's always something to be happy about. And at this point, with Little Miss disseminating everybody with a wonderful song that only she can understand. I don't know if there's anybody out there who can translate baby talk. But yes, I see that as the perfect time to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say bye. And I will see you in, hopefully in a few weeks' time. Bye. Before I go, I just wanted to remind you to watch the 2016 Roundup as I'll be discussing my favourites, um, all my favourite projects, um, designs, yarns, and I'll also discuss what's um, going to be happening with the podcast um, in the new year. So do take care, enjoy the 1st of January, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.